Hello, everybody. It's another wonderful Sunday evening, and uh, we're back. We're back with another episode of All Around Advanced, um, the podcast slash show slash series that will keep you up to date on RGL Season 5 Traditional Sixes uh, in the Advanced Division, of course. My name is Terry, and I am joined by the wonderful Avril Levine Fan 95, a.k.a. Frick My Nick, a.k.a getting owned by comcast how are you today fine sir i'm doing great it's another <laughs> wonderful day of getting destroyed by comcast yeah so i apologize for all the all the, all the viewers in the chat all the people listening from home if your uh your audio starts freaking out it's not me it's him but glad to have you on today um again just a little quick little preview and recap of uh the weeks gone by the events that happened this i guess the opening week of the season um but to start things off, really, we got to talk about, of course, the newest team in Advanced, uh, because they were, you know, potentially playing Invite, and then obviously uh, got dropped down due to the qualifiers, and uh, they're here. The Portland Burnsiders are in Advanced. Um, this is, you know, it's not the same exact team that was playing in the said qualifiers, um, Perhaps, you know, once they realized that they weren't going to be in, they swapped out some players. So gone are Luddy and Big Bank Campaign, and in their place, they picked up Squiddy and RPC. Um, so their full roster is, of course, Yerb and RPC, Scouts, Kylorfo and Tony on Soldier, Fig on Demo, and then Squiddy on Medic. Um, what, do you, what do you think about this lineup? Um... I think it's a really interesting roster move. I mean, I, I like to see that the Portland Burnsiders made it into advanced, although uh, not in the way we thought. We thought we would, they'd move up eventually, but turns out they've been uh, moved down from invite. Um, I think these moves, I mean, Luddy and Scooty, I would say, I don't think in advance was like a big difference in terms of medics. I've never played with Luddy, but Scooty is a pretty solid all-around medic. Um, and especially on a team of this caliber, I don't think a lot of his like weaknesses would be exposed. Um, so I don't think that's a, a huge change, but I think the difference between, like, Big Bank and RPC is, is pretty significant. Just because RPC is, like, the, the kind of scout that'll, like, run over a team and go, like, 24 and 3. Whereas Big Bank's a lot more of, like, a he kind of just plays his role on the flank and does, like, you know, exactly what he needs to very, very well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that makes this roster scarier. Uh, and like I said, I don't think the medic difference between Luddy and Squiddy, I mean... At least not that I'm aware of. There's not, like, a huge difference between them. Yeah. Um, especially because, you know, in the last couple of seasons, we've seen Squiddy get second and Luddy get second. I think I think plenty of people second. sing the praises of both these medics. They're both, yeah. you know, very, very talented. So, yeah, I would agree. Not much but, of a huge change. But I think the change from Big Bank to RPC, maybe not on, like, a on paper DM is an upgrade, but RPC is the kind of player that'll just run over a team. Mm -hmm. um, and is definitely, like, a big game changer, whereas, like, like I guess I don't think Big Bank is really that scout for that team. Right, so. and you know they're off to a nice and nice and simple two and zero start uh, elsewhere as far as roster transactions goes. Um, I did some more digging. The Hypno Screwball team, the Predatory Lending Practices. Uh, if I'll just bring up their roster right here on the screen, but uh, they had day. First of all, they had Robert paid up on their roster. Um, and then they had Daybreak playing both their matches for week one, and I reached out to Hypno and he said that he was just a ringer. Um, in essence, they don't actually have a demo man yet, so Robert was just paid up to be a filler, to, so that way they had six, and then Daybreak stepped in for both their matches. So they are still LFT demo man, uh, or LFP demo man, excuse me, and uh, you know, we'll see how they keep up. Um, and then two other teams that have some changes, the Alfredo Dan team, aka Rock Bottom, they are without their Medic Saga after, um, we'll say, parting with the team, I guess would be the PC variant of what happened. Um, so they are looking for a Medic, from what I heard uh, from Alfredo Dan last week, is that if they don't find a Medic by, you know, Sunday, Monday of this week, they will actually die. So, uh, pro tip, if you're a Medic LFT... I want to hit these guys up and uh, keep their team alive, slash play in advance, slash help yeah, keep advanced, say, if be popping. Yeah, you're like a, a main mid-level medic and you're, you, you were maybe hesitant, like, yeah, I can maybe play like, you know, mid-main or like playoffs, and you just didn't find like a, a team that you liked this season, I would hit them up because it's like a really nice group of players. Like, I, I have only good things to say about every single person on that team. Yep. Um, 
So I can only imagine that that's an environment to learn from. And I don't know what your opinions were in the show last week. Cause I didn't get to watch all of it, but I mean, I, I don't think that's a roster that people are expecting to do amazing in advance. So like anything above, you know, zero and 16, I think is a boon for them. So, you know, if you're looking for an environment to learn in as like a, a medic, you know, might, might, might help those guys. Yeah. And again, like advance this season looks to be extremely, extremely competitive. So you, first of all, you just never know. And then, you know, you, you mesh with them, you click, and then in the mid season and on, or maybe even earlier, you know, you, you go on and do some surprising things and again, make a name for yourself. That's what, I think that's really what this season is going to be all about, honestly, because, you know, we have a couple favorites that we've talked about last week and might address a little bit more this week, but it's like pretty much from there, everything's, uh, up, um, up for grabs and you know depending on how the schedule gods shake up things for you you might have uh you might have one heck of a season but again that that's you know determined by people living or dying or teams living or dying um and then last but not least uh eels and escalators they are also technically down a player because ripple got banned slash suspended and he's banned until like the end of february and now he's also just not on the roster anymore i don't know if um I don't know if that's actually because he left or if he got, like, cut, for example, like in the old ESEA days. Because I thought if you were mm -hmm. banned from RGL, you couldn't actually access the site. I don't know if that's true or not. I think it depends on your ban. Okay. I could be wrong. I've never been banned from RGL, so this is entirely from speculation. Uh, you, you are an ex-admin, after all. It would be bad taste. Um, so I've, I've never had the, the pleasure of being banned, uh, let's say. But I'm pretty sure it depends on your ban. I think if it's, like short term you can still access the website but i don't think you can do anything like you can access the website but you can't do anything specific to your account no matter what but okay um if you're like long-term banned it just tells you i think because i think when you get long-term banned they also ip ban you i could be wrong okay so i mean this I, team I no they uh they obviously did play week one matches they rang oh i forgot who they rang for their first match against team solo umps but uh, they rang young sanity against uh, my team blanc esports so they're still again scrambling for their sixth um, so that's a couple of teams, you know, still, still, unfortunately, not having a full roster. But they you rang know, bacon on. I assume BKN. Bacon yeah, yeah, BKN. yeah. That's who it was. Um, so uh, hopefully those teams can get their roster settled and we won't have any casualties. But now let's uh, let's get into some meat and potatoes of week number one. You know, as you can see here, six teams went two and zero. Oh, so that's. Uh, I guess pretty average, if not exactly average, because I think almost everywhere else shook up pretty evenly. But we have highlighted a couple of matches here, and you know, since we have the man himself, let's start with gaming versus I by Winrar, because this is not the same. This is not the page. Where is the right page? Here we go. This was a five to one victory for the boys in blue, aka gaming. Um, I have the stats on the screen here. Um, I don't know, just give me, your, give me your thoughts on this match. I mean, we've had decent scrim results with the air team uh, in the past, um, but they've always been either one of, two, like, one of two ways. Either we're, like, super neck and neck with them, or we roll them, and there's not a lot in between. Like, we had, like, one night the other night that, like, they got, like, 4 it was, like, 4 -0 for them, but, like, to be honest, it was, like, just us dicking around, and that's also scrim results. Like, our team doesn't take scrims incredibly seriously, like, um, but... I don't know. I felt like that was a match that, like, they just didn't push their advantages super hard. Like, I feel like they struggled to find advantages, and then when they did have them, they didn't get much with them. Like, they would only take a point, and, like, our team just did, like, a really good job of just, like, sending people behind or slowing them down and just making it so, like, everything they tried to do was just, like, an absolute mess. Um, I, I do think that the 5-1 the is a little misleading. I think if they didn't beef or, like, we didn't, like, you know, super clutch a couple of last holds, it would have been like a 5-2, 5-3 game. There's definitely one last hold that I can think of that, like, they had a 2v6, um, and we had, like, 15 second spawns, and then, like, Scream just delayed them for, like, 10 seconds. We got Sleepy to spawn, Sleepy got, like, three kills, and then the rest of our spawns came up, and that was just, a, like, an Omega throw from them. They also didn't play the point at all, um, like, ah. they were pushing last and they had Uber band advantage, so, uh, I don't know what was going on, whether people, so, you know, a projectile cost wasn't shooting the point if that was like what they were trying to do or air just like decided that hey i did you know when everybody's in spawn or everybody's kiting right and there's not frags for me to get i can't shoot stickies on the point i don't know what it was but um i think air had a pretty weak game overall um 
for yeah, I was gonna say... like his usual performances, mm -hmm. right? Like when you expect that of like, yeah. you know, especially like this team is, I think, very built around air. Like, especially if you look at like their heal spread, um, he does all the calling for that team to my understanding as well. Um, and so like, if you're taking that many resources, like he had the most damage out of all the scouts in the server, but he also had the most damage taken. Um, so yeah, I was gonna say to like see, two things. Like, two guy. things stand out for me. First is five mid fights to one. That's obviously huge. You know, mid fights aren't yeah. everything, but they are a decent amount of things in TF2. And you know, winning a mid convincingly with keeping your medic alive and the other medic going down can be huge. And the other thing, let's let's not let's not forget about our boy here, Mr. Zand, twenty six and seven. He yeah. took a hundred and four damage per minute, which, by the way, lowest like, in the server. Um, I so. want to point out too that like I think three or four of Zand's deaths are him sacking. So like realistically, I mean like. A couple of times that he sacked, he got kills. But like, let's say he got like two kills and he sacked four times. Like he had a twenty-four in like four game. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, I think Xander tweeted himself. He said like they just didn't shoot me. They didn't look at me. And yeah, uh, that was a game where like I went into halftime and looked at my stats and like I'm even on combo scout, but like nobody else on my team is getting shot because I think a lot of the damage taken is in the second half and it was like really slow in the second half just because. We won both mids in the second half, but we didn't kill Styles, who's their medic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, end up just being like a, a stalemate on last kind of scenario. And like, if you're up three one, there's no reason to like really like throw your advantage, right? Like, if you have like territory on the map, like you just slow the game down. Like they're the ones fighting the clock, so we just yep. slow the game down. So obviously, if you're the offense, right, then you're going to take more damage than the defending team. So a lot of the damage taken for like shiny and sleepy is just like in the second half. Yeah, I think y'all just played it smart, played it safe, and you know, why don't we just segue right along, because I think, uh, your, wait, was it your other game? I'm already mixing up my notes. Uh, you had our other game written down. Our I do, I do, against the Goblin Zone. Zone, where is it? Right here. So, obviously, logs are a little bit wonky, because, you know, logs don't always compile nicely, um, hmm. but, I mean... We're going to get to Goblin Zone a little bit later as well, because we have another match that we wanted to talk about, but, I mean, pretty much, I feel like it's more or less the same, although mids were a little bit more uh, split between the teams this time around. Yeah, um, one of the mids, I think the mid in the second half, we technically won, we just didn't cap, we went forward to try and get their medic, and then, like, we fed two people in the last, but mm -hmm. I think, like, they didn't have Sam for this match, I don't That's know right. if, change, if was change in. is starting for them, but I think Sam plays, like, a very like vanilla combo scout style and he does it very very well um but i think if you take that out of the equation for goblin zone you don't really have a scout player that plays like a combo scout style so again i think it was like the same story as before where like on top of just like running like all of the weird stuff that this team does like, <laughs> some, like the goblins they are right um they just struggle to push their advantages and like waldo took a million heals and it's statistically not that great for them. Like, if he took 32% heals for his team, it went 13 and 12. Um, he had, like, a negative game on Scout 2. I mean, he runs the fan, but, like, your Scout's not getting enough value if you're taking 32%. And, like, I mean, like, I also yeah. took top heals on my team. And, like, it was one of those games where it's, like, it's constant, like, uber exchanges and, like, you know, getting forced and stuff a bunch. But it was, like, one of those things that they just struggled to push their advantages. And it was also, I felt like, in both of these games, um... I feel like that's what my team does really well, uh, is that we bait me really well. Like teams like I'll put myself in the middle of a team fight and four people will shoot at me and then my team just gets to shoot at four people that are shooting the useless combo scout who's doing twenty DPM anyways. So <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, buddy. I see 144 right here, but you know what else I see? I see eight headshots from change, so you know, his sniper, it's still yeah. crispy. Well, that's, still crispy. That's the other thing, though, too, is that this team just runs off classes at dumb times, and actually one of the things that... um. Not to, to spoil this match and, like, go too into details, but, like, it was one of the things that my team, was like, we came with a game plan coming into both of our games. Like, all right, we're going to shut down air really hard, and I think we did that in this match. And in this game, it was like, all right, just play really slow, play really methodical. You know, people are going to be sitting at corners. You know, people are going to be doing crazy high jumps and speed shots into our team. Um, they ran Pyro a bunch. We expected the Muma Spy a bunch. That's, like, you know, two things that, like, this team does a lot. We knew change is going to run a bunch of sniper, and that, that actually gave us a lot of trouble, was the change sniper. I think that was, like, the one thing they threw at us that we really weren't super prepared for. Right. Um, and that's really where they got that round, is, like, they slowed, they, they, they played around change sniper, and he kind of didn't miss after he got, like, one headshot. And if anything, um, you know, y'all weren't expecting to be playing against change anyway, so. 
Yeah. <laughs> Mooma so, played three minutes I mean, of uh three minutes of uh Pyro. Very fun. Very cool. Yeah, he ran Pyro to the first mid. Let's and, go. Uh, Except we had like no. a, we actually expected that. That was actually something I anticipated was the like scouting report. sniper and pyro to mids. Um so we had a counter strat prepared for it, and I mean if you look at the logs I think you could pick up what it is. But not not the spoiler oh, I think yeah. you can run maps too. Um well, yeah, you see it. But, but I mean, we, we came with a game plan, and I don't think either of those teams really came, like, outside of, like, hey, we're going to play our game. And at least for the air team, like, we had scrimmed them previously, um, and our team was very prepared. We knew exactly what they were going to do, and, like, it was one of those things where it's like, all right, this player is exposed on bid, we can focus them down really easy. Um, and so we never really had to not play our game in either of those matches. And we yeah, and just... I mean, not much else else I can really add to, obviously, from a spectator standpoint, but, you know, well done. 2-0 and oh is to start the season, obviously, the best possible you start you can do. Uh, you know, well, you kind of got a tough <laughs> schedule. Fun fact, both your team and my team have the same exact yeah, Villa week, so matches. I'm sure some of our players on both these squads will have a little rivalry going with each other, a little bit of smack talk, the usual good stuff. Um, but back to Goblin Zone, you know, as we've seen, here and we're about to jump into their other match which was I guess a little bit more surprising um, was their loss against the watch this squad so that's the maze team um, it was a score of 5-2 as you can see here um, I mean not at least from the stats I mean I see obviously that this scout here went 27 and 10 and that's pretty good uh, over the course of you know 28 he minutes damage positive too. Mm -hmm. 230 and took that, like that, 130 yeah, so that, that's a frag a minute and so you know hedge also had a very good game 23 and 12 that's almost a 2 to 1 KD ratio 300 DPM um, but it seemed also a, a, another case of where like one team just steamrolled in terms of mid fights 6 out of 7 that's just you know kind of crazy if you really think about it but um you know goblin zone now find themselves in an o2 hole to start but i'm sure they will rebound with their you know once uh they i guess continue to play with all their janky stuff uh, but moving right along the other games we wanted to talk about uh i guess we'll save uh, we'll just do this one now so uh this game was casted actually on friday by fireside and this was the cat posse versus dior addicts dior addicts i still don't actually know um I don't know why the logs, the classes section looks so weird here, but it is what it is. Uh, this, unfortunately, was not much of a game, as uh, Cat Posse kind of just took control from start to finish, really. Um, from what I saw on the stream, it really just seemed like they won all the scrappy DM fights. Um, and then also, I mean, look, Kurama almost did 300 DPM, so uh, yeah. very, very good. Yeah, um, I was going to say... Um... Having scrimmed the, the Karama and, you know, played this team a few times, I think if you don't put Karama in a box, like, if you don't play to shut him down, then this team kind of gets free reign. Because um, I think he does a lot in terms of, like, making things happen for this team. So... Alright, Mopsy, I don't know what you're talking about, because Shiny <laughs> is not banned from Scout, and also, uh, I don't know if you talk about admin stuff, considering last season. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just spitting facts here. But... Uh, moving right along, we'll get to address the chat a little bit more. Two more matches, we'll quickly go over them. A little bit behind schedule, I guess, our, our projected, not real schedule. Um, trying to provoke. Yeah, I mean, okay, well, anyway, we'll see, we'll see. Next was the other game. This was I buy Winrar versus Watch This. So, uh, you know, week one has been spotlighted by, like, you know, three or four teams coming up big slash close um watch this i actually got to see jemond our wonderful advanced admin review the demo uh yesterday um so this was watch this taking a 3-2 half off of a sneaky sneaky back cap by scuba steve diving for the last point um and then you know i by winrush supposedly kind of woke up as you can see mc 23 and 9 340 dpm Whew, that is that is uh that's quite good might be the best demo performance um of the week, I guess. I guess Artist had like a crazy game, but he like 5 0 a team, so perhaps not as close. I'm gonna say, it's one thing to like get really good stats when you 5 0 a team, but if it's a little closer and you still have really good stats, then uh, another thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, I would say, like, you know, Watch This had definitely uh, come out with a pretty, pretty strong week one despite only winning, you know, one game. You know, they beat Goblin Zone and then they had a pretty close game, all things considered, here versus I by Winrar. So, might want to watch them, no pun intended. But finally, this was Lobsters versus, um, sorry, Lobsters.tf. 
I apologize for being so rude. Lobsters.tf versus Dynasty, and this is, you know, one is a Div 2 returning team. I use that term very loosely because they, you know, swapped out a bunch of their players. Um, and then Lobsters.tf, of course, promoting in from Maine. It was a 5-2 game. A 5-2 game in 16 and a half minutes is kind of crazy if you think about it, because that means each round, you know, was a mid to last. Yeah, as you can see right here, the longest round took three minutes, uh, and then everything else was quick. Um, I don't know about this one right here. That was that's probably second half the way the weird logs come combining. But um, I mean, stats wise, it just seemed uh, this is not actually mixer, right? This is somebody alias no, being that's funny. Wonder. That's wonder. He's been using that name, or at least I think it's wonder. I could be wrong. But, uh... mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's probably wonder. Two rats having sex in Doritos. Back. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, Zabumafu had a very good game as well, 13 and 4. You know, when you bottom death of the server as a demo man and top damage, yep, that's pretty good. So, um, good work for them. But now, let's let's get on to week two. So, uh, you can see the whole slate of matches right here, but a couple of games that we want to talk about. First off, Portland Burnsiders versus Team Solo Um. Um, pulsed, whatever you want to call them. Um, so, TSM. TSM versus Portland Burnsiders. Uh, the showdown that we would have never have expected however many years ago. But anyway, you know, both these teams 2 0, of course, and expected to be in the thick of the playoff race. Um, I don't know. What do, what, do you, what do you think about this matchup in terms of, like, the players, the potential? I would be really surprised if Portland Burnsiders weren't one of the best teams in the division, um, considering, you know, that they have a, like, I don't know, especially just given the roster on paper. Um, I mean, obviously they thought they were good enough to play Invite. They didn't win the qualifiers, but because they tried to play Invite and they lost the qualifiers, they get to play the division with no class restrictions, um, which I think is huge, whereas, like, Team Soul Um is, like, the, the opposite of that, where it's, like, invite capable players who didn't try to play invite so they got rgl'd um i guess the biggest thing for me is like does team solo um take the game seriously because i, I know this is like especially when you're playing with a bunch of friends it's like you know how seriously are you going to take the match and i know this that's a team that you know they value hmm. having fun a lot right? absolutely um so i mean it's like a question of how like seriously did they take it and like are they going to live up to like the potential Right, I mean, it also depends, I think, on what roster they bring. I don't know exactly if they have like a set roster, but uh, pretty sure they have like four social restrictions. I think, restrictions it, I think on it's. Their I think it's. I think the roster is set, but I think you're okay. bringing up a very solid point. It's just like you know how how much are they going to try slash you know how carefree will they be? Because you know, can they win this? Absolutely. Can they win this? Like, you know, I guess I should say like they could win from any possible score on the scoreboard. You know, any possible score mm -hmm. it could come up depending on how much they you know take it seriously or whatever have you so uh this is definitely one of the matches to watch um i guess depending on if invite has games that day as well i would i would look to cast this game i think for week one or week 2a that's for sure yeah um and then the other one or the next one i was gonna do uh dior addicts versus i buy winrar so um Again, we saw Dior Addicts take, I mean, I'll just say it, it was a little bit of a crushing defeat at the hands of Cat Posse during Snakewater Week, um, and now heading into Villa. This is another team, you know, I buy Winrar. Again, uh, I guess one of the, what's the word I'm looking for here? One of the most well-known slash established rosters, I would say. So if they're, you know, if this team, after all the shenanigans that happened with their roster um, and players getting banned, if they're looking to contend this season, I think this is also a very, very important game for them. Yeah. I know it's early, but... Oh. I was going to say, at least like the way that I had it in my head after scrimming a lot of the teams in the preseason, I think both Dior Addicts and I by Winbar are both in playoffs contention, but I think they're, you know, the bottom three-ish spots of playoffs are kind of up in the air and there's like four or five teams that are kind of playing for those last few spots um and i think this is like one of those games that's really going to decide like you know who is really like you know going to make that playoffs push and you know where do you end up in like the the bottom playoffs thunderdome because um you know having a higher seed especially in single a limb matters quite a bit yes sir so uh next up is this week one or week two okay this is week 
one or week two a still this is uh watch this versus st jude's you know we talked about watch this during week one um and now they're coming into villa week st jude's this is the cadet team thankfully i didn't have to talk about their disastrous name change they thankfully reverted back to yeah. st jude's i'm not gonna yeah it was uh it was, it was very very cringe but i think this is a uh this is a potential good game as well. Um, I believe St. Jude's is 0-2 right now, but they had a pretty tough week They're one. They're both 1-1. One and one. Both oh, oh. Are one and one. okay, okay, all right, sorry. My mistake, Cadet and Sale, don't don't flame me, but uh, as you can see right here, St. Jude's, they took a 5-2 loss to the Burnsiders, which, again, not not a bad loss, I guess, if you want to call it that. And then hmm. they 5-2 the Yas team, which is the Captain Fappen, Sela, uh, Liam team. So... Um, Again, could very well be in like the playoff bubble contending type deal. So again, mm -hmm. the all these rosters, pretty much if you aren't like one of the more well known favorites, I feel like everything else is pretty much fair game, you know? It's about yeah. who brings it on match night and who who has done more preparation, who has scrimmed harder, pretty much. I was gonna say, I think there's like a roster success comes on to, to two things. It's like the pieces you have, right? So how good is your roster? Like are the, the initial pieces that you have and how much work do you put in? And uh, I think this is a very close season of advance. I think, you know, the the pieces that a lot of the rosters have are all very, like, close in terms of quality. Um, not to say that there isn't, like, a, a clear divide. I think there's a pretty clear divide in my mind of, like, who's definitely going to make playoffs, who's probably going to make playoffs, and who's, like, out of playoff contention. And it's, like, really where you end up in, like, the bottom advanced Thunderdome. But I also think that there's a lot of potential for teams to just turn that on its head and just be like, yeah, I want to move up a tier, depending on how much they actually put in the effort. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think this should also be a very, very good game. Um, looking to see how um, Sale does versus Abumafu. That demo matchup is probably mm -hmm. the most interesting thing. Um, oh, Maka's here. Hello, Maka. Um, the John Milter team died, yes, because I don't think John Milter is actually committed to a season of RGL so far, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. But moving right along. Yeah, pretty sure they were denied playing main, and their team just kind of fell over after that. I could be wrong, but... I'm pretty sure that's the, the story, at least from RGL's perspective, is like, yeah, we're not going to let you play main, you've terrorized open enough, and then they tried to play advanced, and they're like, alright, what if we got, like, Zillion Moo on scout or something dumb? Mm -hmm. um, so, next one is Goblin Zone versus Predatory Lending Practices. Now, uh, again, obviously the latter team, they don't quite have six yet, so that was mm -hmm. a little bit of oversight on my part, not knowing the full details, but I don't think anybody can blame me for that, uh, but regardless, you know, both these teams started off their seasons 0-2, looking to get, you know, a win, uh, looking to get, a, get onto the, the win column once uh, week two gets going here. Um, when I look yeah, at this I... matchup, I'm thinking about the soldiers on both of these teams. I don't know if you're thinking the same thing, but I mean, that's still like more of a, a smaller analysis, but I mean, I think these are two of the teams that will end up being middle of the table, at least based on roster strength. Um, I think that's a pretty solid scout for predatory lending practices, and Scrooby and Boosh have played together, and W. Bacon, I think he won Div 2 last season, so could be wrong about that, but I know he did very well in Div 2 last season. Um, so, I mean, that's like a good mix of like established players who have played together a little bit, um, and then there's also like a mix of like people who are already really talented, along with you know the the core of like uh, Hypno and I guess whoever they were gonna have on demo, but not anymore. Um, but I think that team going to a zero tune start along with the Goblin Zone is not really what you want to see. Like I mean, there's obviously tons of time for uh, teams oh, to yeah. bounce back. The season but, is young. You know, a two and zero start is not like the the best look. I mean, obviously you have to look at like who they played, but. I mean, Lobsters, TF, 5 owed Predatory Lending Practices. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they got two rounds off the Artist Team, who, um, which, I mean, at least on paper, I would consider the Artist Team stronger than Lobsters, TF. So, Yeah, that's, like, that's, a, that's a good point. That's, a, that's just a very good point. Um, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> and it was like the same thing with Goblin Zone 2, where, I mean, I expected them to be stronger than they were. Again, that was like one of the matches that, like, you know, especially Snake Water Week for my team, I expected, like, two wins but i didn't expect two five ones like i expected that to be closer um so again i think yeah. it's like a very interesting match of like which of these teams it's like because i mean obviously one of them has to win so it's like one of these teams is going to be three one i guess yeah at three one or one and three at the best so it's like no, that's well start. in theory they would and be like, two and two at the best depending on their other game but i see well, what you're saying they're both they're both two and zero or yeah oh and yeah, two there's both zero and two 
So like one of them has to lose. So one of the teams right, is right. going to guaranteed go one and three to start the season. And like At I think momentum matters a lot too coming into a season. Like starting the season off strong, um, you know, helps keep up that motivation, especially if you like put in a lot of time over the off season, uh, and then you come into the season and you know, you don't start getting results right away. Maybe your like scrim results aren't lining up with your match results and everything, then you know, it's kinda hard to keep that momentum. So I think part of, you know, a lot of teams' success um especially in the first two ish three ish weeks is coming in and starting strong you know i think a zero two start isn't the worst thing you're like all right you know maybe we played two teams that like stylistically or whatever like we just don't match up against right but starting one and three is really rough yeah um but again given how competitive this season is i with it playoffs being top eight i would not be surprised if nine and seven you know, and like a bunch of rounds is good enough for playoffs. So we'll see what happens yeah. here. And again, the big question also mark. Also, teams that live. Too, that's also that's true. Um, and again, with tying into that, the big question mark with this match in particular is who Predatory is going to get for their demo. Because once again, oh, they yeah, don't they don't have a game. they don't have a long term they don't have a player set in that position yet. Um, but yeah, was there were there any other matches if we take a look here, Nick, that you were interested in and potentially seeing? Like, you know, maybe not streamed or casted, but, like, something that interests you. Um, I mean, at least personally, I, I kind of have, like, in my mind, like, who you're, like, there's, like, five, maybe six teams that really contend for, like, the, the top four in advance this season. And I think uh, this week we'll get a, a decent idea of, you know, solidifying who your top four are. Daybreak was just um, a ringer, Asher. Have, I call him the artist team just because artist is, I think, by far it's, their best It's player. Honey Baking Club. Um, yeah. That's... Honey Baking Club or, like, the slanty face. Um, they play you guys and then us, but we also play Cat Posse. So I think depending on like how the you know the matches turn out, I think it really depends on like I think the Cat Posse, uh, Honey Bacon Club, and my team are all kind of contending for that. Like you know I think we'll all make playoffs, but I think of like who makes the top four and where in the top four, uh, we'll start getting a pretty good grasp of that um, in the next couple of weeks. Especially yeah. because like whoever doesn't come out like you know undefeated at the end of this week if anybody even does right um then you know it depends on you'll get matches next week to kind of finalize that hopefully because yeah i think i think what you top teams. i think what you said earlier is a very like appropriate description i think there's like five teams that are vying for top four right now and then there's just a whole slate of other teams that could all you know depending on how matches ju uh, jumble out how the schedule goes they can all be fighting for those the final, I guess, four slots or three slots if you're talking about five obvious more favorites right now. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to address is this is a very janky start to the season in terms of the map pool because, like, Snakewater, obviously everyone knows Snakewater, but then week two, Villa, week three, Metalworks, week four, Viaduct, that is one, one bizarro uh, amalgamation of early season maps if if you ask me um but it should yeah. it should make for very very interesting stuff because obviously again how your record what your record is kind of determines how your next week goes and on and on and on throughout the rest of the season and especially yeah. come viaduct week that's going to be that's going to be big because as we all know viaduct is uh upset potential everywhere um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, we talked about some of the roster changes and roster news. We talked about week one. We've previewed a little bit week two. But let's let's finish things off here. Let's talk up. Let's go back to this game right here. Portland Burnside versus Team Solo Um. If this game doesn't get casted, or I guess even if it does get casted, I want you to give me a prediction, Nick. So it that way we can up, all like be uh, totally correct and not <laughs> yeah. mess up at all. Um, this is a tough one because, like I said, I think Team Solo Um is a team that maybe isn't taking the season super seriously based on you know like how strong i think their roster is on paper versus their like current match results so i think that's a little interesting to see is like how seriously to take the match um but i had to guess i think the addition of rpc um like i said i think it helps the portland burnsiders a lot um and i think that team solo um this is like their first real match of the season they played two teams that i don't think are the strongest on paper to start the season but i think they'll come into villa week kind of realizing that they have two tougher matches um and i want to say portland burnside will take it uh it's villa so i don't think teams are going to do like an excellent job of like stalling it out it's not like one of those maps like process or snake water where like you play you pugged it a billion times so you know how to just like 
burn mm-hmm. block down and do all the really annoying things. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be like a, a 5-3 game just because how new Villa is. I don't think teams have the most experience on it. So I think it'll be hard for teams to kind of slow down a roll. But I definitely think it'll be pretty back and forth. But especially because last isn't the easiest to hold either. Like it's kind of awkward to hold the last, at least in my opinion. So uh, I don't think we'll get like super long stalemates there. I think it'll be like a 5-3 game. I'm glad you I'm glad you picked the Burnsiders because I was prepared, you know, to play devil's advocate for the sake of diversity, but I think I'm going to believe in TSM here. Um, I just think that collection of players, if they like really turn it on, I think I think my teammate Antecedent put it best. They might have like some of the best mechanics in the division overall, like uh, yeah. player for player, pound for pound. So I'm going to give it to them by the score of we'll say like five. I'll say five three as well. I think it should be a very, very close game, um, but I think TSM will take it. And um Final uh, final thing I want to address, public service announcement, just in case if y'all don't know, we're playing Villa B18, so there have been some changes compared to last season. There's no island on two amongst a slew of other things, so don't be surprised tonight in your scrims if you're playing yeah. the wrong version, or make right sure you play the right version. Because, yeah, yeah, uh, that's what I mean. The, the changes aren't, like, you know, entirely a map breaking, I still think it's, like, still fine to play in the league. But the the changes are decently significant, especially for seconds. So, yeah. But would recommend scrimming the right version of the map. That will be. Uh, you play the wrong oh yeah, that would. Right that's a rude anymore. awakening. Yep, absolutely. But that will be pretty pretty much it from us today. This was all around advanced episode two. Good luck, have fun to everybody heading into Villa Week. Uh, for the couple of teams, at least in our division, that are uh, don't have six yet, I wish you guys the best of luck. Hopefully, you guys, um, you know collect a new player and sign them to your team soon um and we'll be back again next sunday probably again around this time um with more more breakdowns more news more guests thank you mr nicholas for joining me tonight and uh, Um, thank you for having me we'll be seeing you guys next time eat healthy wear a mask and uh god bless